So for the first time in nearly two years, we have technically just received our first official update in regard to the Knights of the Old Republic remake in what I consider to be a direct capacity. There have definitely been times when people have spoken about the KOTOR remake, but in a more unofficial capacity, such as the CEO of Embracer, but they would never respond to questions directly about the game with direct answers. It was more like insinuations. However, today, the CEO of Sabre Interactive, who took over development of the game from Aspire in 2022, was directly asked about the KOTOR remake and for the first time, directly responded. Now, if you're not entirely aware, a few weeks ago, Sabre Interactive was sold by Embracer in a deal worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and with that sale, there was a lot of speculation as to whether Sabre would continue to develop the Knights of the Old Republic remake. Industry insiders at the time had claimed that Sabre had taken the remake with them, and there was a more significant clue in the press release for the sale, which stated that all licenses that Sabre were working on at the time would be included in the sale. But of course, the thing is, the Knights of the Old Republic remake was never directly mentioned by name. A lot of the time it was alluded to as a major licensed IP or something along those lines, so while we could speculate and come to a very reasonable conclusion that they were talking about the Knights of the Old Republic remake, there was no official confirmation in that sense. However, last night, IGN posted an article stating they had an interview with the CEO of Sabre Interactive, Matthew Karch, to speak about the sale in general, their experiences with Embracer, the games that were in their pipeline, and of course, the future for the studio. And at the time of making this video, the full interview hasn't yet released, but they released a snippet of it in regard to the section where they talk about the Knights of the Old Republic remake. And in this interview, the CEO confirmed to IGN IGN that Sabre Interactive did indeed take the Knights of the Old Republic remake after the split with Embracer. Now of course, for some reason everything around this game is obscure, so Matthew didn't say much in regards to its status, or if anything had changed, or the exclusivity. However, he is on quote saying, It's clear and it's obvious that we're working on this. It's been in the press numerous times and what I will say is that the game is alive and well, and we are dedicated to making sure we exceed consumer expectations. So in this interview, he's confirmed that development on the game is going smoothly, which is quite literally the first official development update we have had about this game since 2022. Now, does this mean he's telling us the truth? That's for you to personally decide. However, to come out and officially state that the development of the game is going well and that the game is alive would be a strange thing to say publicly just after your company has been bought and in an era where so many things are being cancelled. And for me, this whole situation raises some interesting questions. Are Sabre simply working off of the foundation that Aspire built, or are they starting from scratch? Is the branding still the same? I mean, I find it very interesting that for the past few years they've refused to actually name the title in press releases and conferences. Perhaps they'll be making a remaster instead, which Sabre are more known for, or perhaps they're doing something else. Did the massive success of Baldur's Gate, which has reinvigorated the turn-based CRPG genre into a massive global sensation, which KOTOR built the foundations for, have an impact on how they are viewing the title moving forward? So many things do remain to be seen. Now, for me, I know several years ago when they took the KOTOR remake from Aspire, they took everything they had made. This includes all the models, the environments, the voices. They assimilated much of the writing staff into Sabre Interactive 2, and so for that reason, I don't think they started from scratch in the sense that the game went back into a kind of concept phase holistically. But with that said, I don't think the entirety of Sabre Interactive's core studios are 
are working on the game right now. I think the delay of Space Marine has affected that because those guys are clearly the ones that they would want working on this remake based on the quality of that game. But I think there are people working on the KOTOR remake, but I think production is probably slow and there are pockets of groups around Saber Interactive as a whole that are contributing to the title. But I think full production will go full steam ahead once Space Marine has been released or at the very least a few months prior. But that is complete conjecture on my part. Now this could be a totally irrelevant point, but I do think the massive success of Baldur's Gate 3 has to be considered. Baldur's Gate 3 is the pinnacle of the Knights of the Old Republic formula. It took everything about those old school turn-based RPGs that have kind of died over the past decade and became quite possibly the most critically acclaimed video game of all time. And the thing is, the video game industry is a trend-based industry. They are always chasing what's popular and what will make money. And if Sabre were in a sort of precarious position where they were determining how to move forward with what they wanted to do in regard to the KOTOR remake in a design sense, I really do think the success of Baldur's Gate 3 may have had an impact on where they wanted to go. And I know firsthand whether or not you want to believe me that the Knights of the Old Republic remake stylistically was very similar to something like the Final Fantasy VII remake. There was going to be a balance between turn-based gameplay and more hands-on hack-and-slash gameplay, let's call it. So perhaps there's a world where Saber have looked at this and gone, okay, let's remake the game visually, but change the combat to be something more like Baldur's Gate instead of Final Fantasy VII. Then, of course, there is the whole Sony debacle in all of this. It was Sony's disdain towards Aspire's KOTOR remake that caused it all to blow apart in the first place. They wanted the KOTOR remake to be more cinematically aesthetic in line with their first party studios, whereas Aspire was creating a very grand in scale RPG. But there are several industry insiders claiming that Sony are no longer involved with the remake and I've heard a few rumours inside the industry myself but I can't confirm anything. But if Sony aren't involved, maybe they'll be given a little bit more creative freedom on the side of Sabre in regard to the whole design of the game. But the truth is, who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. I've been asked many times whether we'll end up seeing the game in some capacity this year. Maybe a new announcement trailer which is branded with Saber instead of Aspire. I mean the title is still on Aspire's website which is a little bit odd considering the two parties are no longer connected in any way shape or form. But at this point maybe we'll see something at the back end of the year but my answer is to not expect it. But that is enough from me because I'd love to know what you think about this official statement on the Knights of the Old Republic remake and whether you're still on the bandwagon of the game being dead or if this gives you a little bit of hope. Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, it helps me out a great deal. And if you want to keep up with everything surrounding the Knights of the Old Republic remake, perhaps consider subscribing. And if you want more awesome KOTOR content, you should check this video out. It's an in-depth look into who Darth Nihilus was before KOTOR 2. I'll see you there.